Our next guest is a very a funny comedian and actor, as well as the co-host of the hit podcast Las Culturistas. His album, Have You Heard of Christmas, is out now. Please welcome back to the show our friend Matt Rogers, everybody. <laughs> You were very good. A lot of times a guest will try to do that. They'll try to sync up with a drummer and it ends badly. Can I tell you what it is? What is it? Jennifer Hudson was just at her, so it's very musical, the vibe. The vibe. She left a little bit of the musical vibe here. 100%. I'm soaking it up. Can now, you believe that I'm on the show and so is she and I'm selling the album? Very I weird. <laughs> very weird. No. It's not right, but it is okay. It is. <laughs> I did. I did sing part of her song to her backstage. Yeah. Now that's not technically allowed. No. <laughs> but I'll say, does anyone know the song "Spotlight" by Jennifer Hudson? <laughs> the real ones are here. So there's like a call and response, uh -huh. and she did the call and response. And did you warn her in advance, or did she just know what to do? She wasn't warned. I was oh. here. <laughs> She probably should have been, to be honest with you. So Sam. did you have a very, was it a wonderful moment? Would you say it was a? It was incredible and it was kind of everything I ever wanted because I'm gonna tell you, when she got voted off American Idol, that was the first time I ever knew what it felt like to be truly radicalized. Okay. <laughs> like I remember she got voted out and I had ants calling me that night, like what happened? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, Aunt Maureen, I'm trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> And so then I started to, from that point on, I would vote politically. Like, I'd vote for everyone but the person I wanted out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't vote for my favorites. I, I targeted people who were messing the show up for me. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. I was like the original Kornacki. Wow, good. So she basically taught you the value of democracy. Exactly. Yeah. And thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> You've given us so much. Um, so this is, uh, this is a, oh wait, before I ask about the album, because yeah, I put that away. Out but you were at BravoCon. Yeah, I so was. So BravoCon is a real big old thing now in Vegas. It's one of the realest, biggest old things now and in Vegas. And how did you end up moderating a panel? Well, Seth, I am I have a sick disease yeah. where I'm absolutely obsessed with all those women there. By the way, their names are Uba, Jessel, Bryn, Erin, and Sai, if that means nothing to you. Yeah. Real ones are really here tonight. <laughs> but. It wasn't even just that. It's kind of a, like a great mystery how I'm alive. I saw Usher Friday night, did BravoCon Saturday, and then Adele Saturday night. That's great. And somehow I sit here. I'm so, yeah, it's amazing you made it out. And the craziest thing was BravoCon. Yeah. It, it's, I'm telling you, I was like, if I get murdered, it was the Teresa Judice fans. <laughs> Well, I think that goes without saying. Well, yeah. I don't even watch those shows, and I and know that And you know much. the household name. <laughs> no, but it was fun. It was, a, it was a celebration. This is a celebration as well of Christmas. Now, this started as a bit, but yeah. I want to know, uh, these songs are very funny, Thank you. but they're also good songs. This Thank is you. not, this, so they're catchy, fun Christmas songs. But what, in the beginning of this idea, what part of the seed of making an album like this was funny to you? So basically, I think it was just this idea that every pop star like really loves Christmas. Like that ain't true. <laughs> you want the money, girl. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I thought, I think it was like, and I don't doubt that Mariah really loves Christmas. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Mariah Carey, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, Not one of the lesser Mariahs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I, I was watching an interview with her and I think like the interviewer kind of said like the quiet part out loud. She was like, wow, you making money every year. And I was like, wow. Like yeah. we sort of really revealed the capitalism of it all there. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was maybe the funniest thing I had ever heard. By the way, Mariah's on my sock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she gets- It's like the Wendy Williams shoe cam. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I think I was just like, I think that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Like this idea that like Christmas is the last vestige of the monoculture. And you can, if you get in there and you do a good job, you can kind of- You can get paid every can, year. I mean, this is my second year here for the Christmas stuff. So, <laughs> so it's working out pretty well. It's working on you. I do want to uh, note, I know I was 100% working on you. Uh, I, I didn't realize, I didn't realize until this moment that I'd been had, but I am. <laughs> Uh, when a lot of I people... think politically again. <laughs> uh, a lot of people argue about when the Christmas season officially starts. Yeah. Uh, the uh, your actual uh, the special this album's from mm -hmm. last year was a little bit closer to Christmas, correct? When it came out. Yeah, I think it came out early December. Okay, so, so this is early. 
November. Yeah. When do you actually think the season starts? So I started recording this in late June. <laughs> and my one day off was the 4th of July. I was at like a gay party in LA. Everyone was in Speedos. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing a Christmas album. <laughs> um, but I think it kind of starts whenever Mariah says, but this year, it's not just Mariah, it's also Cher. Okay. So Cher and I obviously got together at one of our weekly dinners. Of course. And we were like, is this the year for us? And uh -huh. we said, yeah. But she announced hers like first week of September. Yeah. And I was like, are we late? They were like, she's early. Okay, gotcha. Now, do you think Cher jumped the gun a little because she was worried about competing with yours? I think she's incredibly threatened by me. Yeah. <laughs> and she should be. Yeah. Um, you, do, you do have a song. <laughs> That's the pull quote. Like, none of, none of the rest of it makes the interview. I'm just now, it's now Teresa Judice fans and Cher fans trying to kill me. Oh, yeah, now you don't know. Horrifying. Now the detectives are going to be like, it's a coin flip, Sarge. <laughs> now, Bring all the ladies in for questioning. You, uh, you have a song about uh, how Christmas is the horniest time of the year. It is. Yeah, and that's nice, because I feel like nobody ever points that out. Yeah, I have a song. Yeah. That's really why I'm here, is because Mariah says what she says about Christmas, yeah. I, Cher says what she says, and I'll say all the gay stuff they can't yeah. say. Um, You're brave enough to say the things they won't. I, would, I can be described as brave, yes. Yeah. Um, like when I sang to Jennifer Hudson backstage. Yeah, that was pretty brave. <laughs> um, but basically, I have a song called Also It's Christmas, and it's about when you're like partying in the club around the holiday, and then you have to sort of contend with the fact that like you go outside and it's like candy canes and stuff. Yeah. Because in the club, it's kind of always the club. Yeah. And then you get home, and if you're lucky enough to bring someone home, it's like, I guess you have to creep by like your sister and her kids staying with you. Yeah. That's less, right. less horny. I've also like, I, I have, I have, Seen, I, I mean, I have this has been true when people are at home for Christmas, that's when they get horny in the DMs. Oh, interesting. I have sealed the deal with many people who were bored at home. Gotcha. <laughs> who just kind of knew I would respond. Okay. And they now were right. is like, so if this is like a Christmas Eve sealing of the deal, is that to be arranged after the holidays conclude, or is the sealing of the deal take place? On the eve. It's usually, so usually you're busy on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Yeah. And then there's that like two day period where you're kind of still at your parents' house. Yeah. And you're like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the phone comes out and you're like, hey, dude, <laughs> looking good. Like the lag, the response, you too, bro. <laughs> I don't know why we're talking like straight guys, but gay guys yeah. kind of do do that. I will say, as you're doing this, I'm like, I think I could do this. Yes. <laughs> Can I say, Seth, you'd be a huge hit with Thank gay guys. You. So it's like basically like talking about fantasy football, but for hooking up. It's it's incredibly similar to that. <laughs> think politically, everyone. <laughs> Uh, can you tell me about uh, the song God's Up to His Tricks? Yeah. So I. <laughs> There's I also. Have a song, I have a song called God's Up to His Tricks, and this also, is. Also, about... you also have one called Lube for the Sleigh. Yeah. <laughs> Should we just go track by track? Yeah. So, Lube for the Sleigh is about how. I don't know if you guys realize this, but Santa, he doesn't go back to like refill the big bag of gifts. Like, yeah. He has to put all those gifts in his one big bag. And yeah. So, I feel. Like, what he obviously has to have happen is he has to lube up all the gifts for the big bag so they fit. Oh, and, interesting. And nobody asks why Santa has so much lube. <laughs> Only Mrs. Claus knows. Okay, gotcha. So maybe the whole, the, getting the gifts in a bag is like a cover story. Maybe. Maybe the elves are like, what's all this lube? And he was like, oh, I don't go back. Exactly. Yeah. But then I also, <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, I have to make one big trip. <laughs> Um, and then God's up to his tricks is just about how like I remember I think I was I think I was hanging out with Bowen and we were in traffic and I was like God really got up to his tricks today with this traffic and that just kind of came out of my mouth and I was like oh so now when anything good or bad happens to me that's blind faith that's God just getting up to his little tricks yeah and so I wrote a song about that it's in the it's in the style of like a musical theater Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> And Loop for the Slay is a disco song, by the way. I know that that's, I that, think, that seemed like I it think was... if given the choice, we would have got that right. Right, yeah. right, right, exactly. Uh, You're coming on my podcast. I am, so you mentioned Bowen. Uh, you and uh, Bowen Yang have a po How long have you, how many episodes have you done of Lost Culture? Oh, God, we're coming up on 400 episodes. That is amazing. Podcast. Yeah. Congratulations. That's Thank really, you. really cool. And you know what's funny? Like, we started it in 2016, and we thought we were so late on podcasts. This is so lame. So we were funny. like, this sucks. We're doing a podcast now. It's like over. Now everyone else is like, you know, 
Hillary. Yeah, I love Hillary's it. got a pod. <laughs> but yeah, you guys were like front runners on podcast. Congratulations. Which we never would have known. And by the way, it's a big deal for you booking our pod because we don't allow straight men on. Really? No, it's you and Will Ferrell, and we had to let him on because he begged. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, it was I pathetic. mean, based on this, I think I, I know how to talk like gay men. I'll be like, what's up, bro? How's like it going? Like I said, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, I get in your DMs. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> um, hey, uh, what a delight to have you here. Congrats Thank on the crowd. So I can't wait to do your podcast. Matt Rogers, everybody. Have you heard of Christmas out now? We'll be right back with more later.